about you guys so I hope you are excited about today's DIY bench makeover I'm calling this the sad bench makeover because it was a very sad bench that has been sitting outside for the last two to three years in four seasons winter fall all of it and had a lot of water damage and was very you know unloved so we're gonna breathe some life back into this bench so what I'm gonna do is start off with a sander excuse my sander I actually drove over it by accident in the garage I didn't realize it was on the ground and I crack the little bag thing that was on the back part of it that's supposed to help keep the dust from flying all over and I'm too cheap to go buy a whole new one so I just put on a mask and used it outside on the deck on a windy day so this way all the dust kind of flew away all right so just for you guys that are going to ask why there's no um, bag on the end of it all right so what I did was I started off sanding the um, bench part the area where your butt will go the sitting part um, I started sanding that first and then on to removing the rusted in screws that were in the old hinges here this entire strip was extremely rusted and there's no way I would have left that there I know the rust actually like penetrated the wood and stained the wood so I'll talk about that later in the video but this had to go so it was giving me a hard time the rust actually made some of the screws very sharp so when I was trying to take them out with my hands because some of them were stuck in there they were like almost like cutting me like it, it I'm happy it didn't cut me but if you have something like this use gloves okay now um, I'm just finally removing the um, seating part from the entire bench because some of the screws broke in there or some of them were just too rusted in and they would not come out so I just used my hammer to remove the bench completely from well the seating part completely from the bench okay so this is the strip still attached to the seating part and I'm just gonna use my hammer to rip that out I was just not gonna deal with the frustration of trying to take out each individual screw it, it was just too frustrating you guys it literally took me about two hours okay to get some of these screws out and it was very hot and I was taking breaks and everything trying to come back at it. I was getting frustrated so it's like you know what whatever you know if it breaks it breaks but I was pretty sure it wasn't going to break like the wood is very good that's on this bench for it to be outside for so long in crazy weather with snow piled on top of it and rainstorms and all kinds of stuff and for it to still hold up for all these years I figured you know ripping out some screws wasn't going to damage it okay I had to use my foot <laughs> to help me get some resistance here and just finally rip that off like it was just so disgusting I didn't even want to touch it um, by the way I got this bench for $20 at a yard sale or an estate sale um, the lady was selling everything in her house on the yard whatever she had she was selling so um, I ended up getting this bench for $20 and it comes with storage on the inside if you could see that so now I'm gonna go ahead with my sander and just sand you know a few areas where I know I'm going to need it to be nice and smooth and I'm sanding the area where those hinges were to take off a good layer of the stains from the rust you know from all the corrosion over the years of the hinges getting wet and then dry and then wet and then dry and cold and winter and all that stuff so just sanding that area too and just taking off a layer of the um, finish that's on the bench because it's all flaky and I just wanted it to be nice and smooth so you know usually with my projects I go in with my um, my bonding primer instead of sand a whole bunch but this bench had a lot of water damage on the finish and it was very flaky almost like um, um, 
almost like like fish scales almost like very very tiny fish scales that's how it looked up close all the finish was just like flaking off it just was not good and I didn't want to paint over that and then have it you know start flaking off in the house after a certain amount of time okay so that's why I'm just sanding a bit all right you guys so now we're gonna move on to the next part and there were some screws and, and nuts missing from the side of the bench that held it together on the other side all the screws are there on this side for whatever reason all the screws were missing so I had to go to Home Depot and I pretty much guessed the size of the screws and I was pretty close um, to getting the right size it's a little tiny bit tight but it did the job it did the trick I even got um, the same type of screws with the same um, head so they're kind of like a rounded little um, almost like a little like a little dome okay and I also got new nuts for it so this is probably gonna freak some people out um, I'm an animal lover but certain bugs I'm just no not here for it so I thought that was mud that I just took out I assumed that they the where the bench was I assumed they used mud or some type of cement to hold the bench together and to my surprise it was actually a nest for a like bee thing not like a honeybee this is like a wasp type bee one that for whatever reason exists other you know just to bite you or sting you or whatever I don't know bees don't bite but sting you you know so I as I'm screwing this creature comes out and it's like so horrifying but um even my son was freaked out but you know it had to go oh. yeah anyways so still, it's I alive probably still well, was dead though and went in with the nuts and it was alive out. before Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. That's probably gonna give you guys. So if we just kept it like the thing would have hatched and came mm -hmm. there would have been some bee hornet thing and it's gonna live there. Just, ew. Okay, and guess what? There were three other nests. So this hole right here had a nest. So I took that one out. Um, the little bumblebee or it wasn't even a bumblebee. The wasp was very very small. So on the back of the bench, I noticed that there were some panels that felt a bit loose. So I went into them with some finishing nails and just my hammer. Um, I don't own a nail gun. They honestly scare me. It just makes me very nervous. And, you know, I grew up using a hammer. That's what my um, opa taught me to use, a hammer. So... You know, I'm more comfortable with a hammer. I'm not too worried about hitting a thumb or anything. Nail guns, on the other hand, you know, electricity and the fact that it's a nail gun. Yeah, no. All right, so maybe one day I'll face my fear in use. Well, maybe one day. So once I finish up reattaching or securing the back of the bench, I'm going to go in with my sander and sand the inside of the bench and get a good layer of old varnish and old dirt and everything off of this bench. I pretty much want like a nice clean, you know, canvas to work with when I start painting eventually. So, you know, just a slight light layer that I'm taking off, but enough to make it nice and smooth and to, you know, even things out. Alright you guys, so now I'm just going to go ahead and sand the side of the bench. Remember, it, it, it was outside, and if you can see on the bottom right, you can see by the foot, there's a little bit green. It did have like some moldy stuff on it. So that's another thing I wanted to sand. And then I realized that there was a, um, one of these legs had a broken part to it. So I went ahead and used some Gorilla Glue. I suggest using the one that doesn't foam up. This one does. And you're going to have to keep wiping it up when it foams up. Because if it foams up and you don't wipe it, it'll dry like that. Okay, like really puffy. So... What I did was squeeze the glue into the part right there that was loose. I didn't want to really take it off all the way because then I, I didn't want to have to do all the extra stuff. So I put the glue in there, wiggle it in, okay? 
and make sure I put enough in there because I know it's gonna swell up anyways but I just wanted to make sure the inside of there had enough glue so I pretty much held it in place and used a quick finishing nail on an angle to hold it in place I'm sorry my arm was in the way and you know I hope you guys do understand when I'm doing DIY I'm by myself majority of the time I'm moving the camera around by myself I don't have a studio for my DIY I have a studio for my beauty stuff but not DIY okay so now I'm gonna go in and fill in some cracks using some plastic wood this I got from Walmart and as you guys see this is water damage so I'm just gonna fill that in with some plastic wood and then sand it down and to get this putty or little tub of plastic wood is pretty cheap I think they're like three four dollars and it's really handy to keep around especially when you have kids okay so now I'm gonna sand the back part of where the hinges were attached to the seating part of the bench okay so this is the part that opens up and where you sit so as you guys can see i'm sorry i'm like i have some my like my throat's feeling weird but i'm sanding that area off just to get all that cruddy rusty nastiness off and the plan was to do chalk paint all over the bench and i did make my chalk paint but for whatever reason it was starting to like um congeal or is that the word it was starting to get like really thick and lumpy and clumpy so i decided to still use it and just use it as a primer this did just give me a little bit of extra work to do but i was fine with it because i didn't want to waste the paint and what it also did was um fill in um small cracks and little holes and things like that that you know happened over the years especially with the water and moisture getting to this bench it was not covered um i wasn't told that it was covered um the neighbors that were around that saw the bench if you guys see there was a picture of the bench on the outside they told me it was just outside like that for years so you know when water gets the wood and it's not protected things will happen so you know in a way the chalk paint helped especially because it's you is made using the plaster of paris i have my recipe on the first video of the dresser that i finished or posted a while ago I'll have a link to that in this video here or in the end of the video, okay? And there will also be links in the description box. So once I had it all completely painted with the chalk paint that I made, I went in and just sanded it down a bit. And this gave me a really nice, buttery, you know, smooth surface to work with. So I wasn't too, too upset with it. I used a very fine sandpaper to make sure that it comes out really nice and smooth nothing too rough or too coarse for paint i use this glidden diamond paint this is their paint and primer in pure white or bright white and it's a satin finish so this is going to make it much easier for me to clean and i went ahead and used a paint roller to paint the bench this gave me more of a smoother professional looking surface than using a brush usually when i do chalk paint i use a brush but like i said i changed my mind on that not only because my chalk paint was starting to act up funny and i honestly think it was because of the temperature in the house it was a bit hot um you know and then usually when i'm by myself i i don't put the air on or anything so it was it was a bit hot and another thing is I noticed that the areas where the hinges were that the rust color was bleeding through the chalk paint so I would have had to prime the bench anyways to paint it the color that I wanted and even though you wouldn't even see those areas once I attached the seating I still wanted it completely white I didn't want any bleeding whatsoever so I just used the roller and there's my Lucy baby and my Jack boy um always in the mix have to be in the middle of everything and jack needs to inspect every single thing that i do and he knows that he's being annoying right now but he doesn't care he doesn't care and he knows i'm not gonna yell at him or be upset at him but i will probably do something that he's not gonna like you know like how i got so close up he's like what are you doing so eventually i had to take him off and finish so what i did was paint the inside part of the the seating bench part of the um bench the seating part so i paint the inside and did my measurements 
And by the way, it took um, it took about a day to, um, you know, prep the bench and put on the first coat. And then it took about another hour to put on the final paint. So I'm using one and a quarter inch mattress pad. Um, I was going to use the um, cushions that they sell in the arts and crafts section, but it was just not long enough and it was really overpriced for the type of um, cushion you get. It wasn't really that thick. So I went with this twin um, extra long mattress pad and it was $10. It was $9.95 or $9.98, something like that. And I'm just going to double it to make sure that there's enough cushion on the seating part of the bench, you know, to make you feel comfortable. So I just did my measurements on the bench and I'm going to cut the cushion. I double it first and just cut it to size. You can also use this type of cushion to make your animal a pet bed or something like that, which I will do because I have... Um, some fabric here that I've been meaning to make my Lucy baby a bed. If you guys want to see how I make her a dog bed, let me know so I can film it for you before I do it and not film it. And then someone on Instagram is going to ask me, how did I do this? You know what I mean? All right. So now that I have my seating cushion cut and ready, I'm going to go in with my board and flip it over. Remember, I painted the inside part white, okay? I painted the inside part white. And the plan was to leave the inside part without anything, but you'll see that I eventually covered that up. Anyways, but yeah, that's just how, you know, when you're doing a project, you change your mind sometimes really quickly or you change your mind when you're finished doing something and then have to restart the entire project. So what I do now is pretty much line up the cushion end to end and then I go in with my staple gun make sure you use some protective eye gear just in case okay and I'm just stapling in between the little um, curves there I'm stapling in between them and stapling the mattress pad onto the seating part of the bench now I flipped it over I did double it over and now I'm gonna go in with a bit of batting and I'm gonna staple this on the opposite side of the bench seating area. I put the batting on the end where the um, cushion folds, okay? So where the cushion folds, not on the opposite end where the two sides meet. So the end where the cushion folds. So I flipped it over and stapled on the batting, as you guys could see right there. You see what it does? It holds it in place. And then I can bring it around now and pretty much staple that in place to, you know, to get it together. So now I'm just going to smooth things out. And I've never done a, um, I've never done a bench like this before. You know, usually when I was younger, we did, we reupholstered things, you know, all we did was just change the fabric and use nails or staples to put the fabric in place. But, you know, I've never had to put the cushion in place at, um, when I was little. I, the cushion was already there. Okay, but I just wanted you guys to see. You can see there, the, those are where the two ends meet up of the cushion, the mattress pad. And I'm using the batting as um, it kind of sandwiches the cushion together. Okay, like a wrap like a wrap that, that best explains it and keeps it in place. So I'm just stapling that on to the back part of the um, seating part of the bench. And like you want to pull it tight, but not too, too tight. Um, batting is very delicate. Okay, so you don't want to pu pull it too tight and then you rip your batting and then you'll have to get a new piece or go buy a new piece. So I just bought enough for my project and a little bit more just in case because things always pop up. And I'm just going to go in and cut off all the excess batting that I do not need. So that's how it's going to look. So now we have our cushion on the bench. 
So I'm going to flip this over so you guys could see how it looks. And then now we're going to go in with our fabric. I'm using this faux um, leather, slightly like a satin metallic um, fabric, which I got from Walmart, by the way. It was $7.89 or $7.98 a yard, which was really affordable. So now I'm going to staple the fabric in a straight line in the same area where I stapled the batting the first time. And we're going to pretty much do the same thing, use it as a wrap to sandwich or wrap the top part of the bench and the cushion. Okay. And remember wear your protective eye gear. I don't want anyone to get hurt. So it's some, you know, it's better to be safe than sorry. So once you have that all stapled off, I'm going to go ahead and cut off any excess batting that's still like poking up on the top there because, you know, once you fold over the fabric, you'll be able to see it, you know, looking all bunchy and, you know, uneven under there. So just take off any excess batting that you don't need that's just poking up there. So, you know, if you don't want to do a, um, if you don't want to cover the inside part of the bench, you can just do like this, just put it over and you'll have like the nice seamless look. So once I pull it over, so you see now we have that seamless look. You can't see where the staples are. So, you know, if that's the look that you want to go for and you don't want to cover the inside, you can totally leave it like this. But I ended up covering the inside anyways. I think it, I think it just made the bench more warmer, you know, gave it more of a homey feel once I did that. So I'll show you guys that later in the video. I also cut my fabric to size and I always cut a little bit bigger than what I need. I always leave a little bit more than what I need because you never know if you'll need more or you know, you'll staple in the wrong place or something. So always have a little bit of extra fabric, you know, never cut precise fabric when reupholstering or doing any type of, you know, project where you're using fabric to cover furniture always make it a little bit bigger because you can always cut off the excess so as you guys can see now i'm pulling it a bit tight and i'm going to turn it over just to check and make sure that it's nice and smooth make sure it feels secure and i'm just going to go ahead and apply the rest of the staples this staple machine by the way i got from walmart and it was actually pretty affordable i think it was nine dollars and it came with the staples. All right, you guys, so I'm putting the staples about an inch and a half to two inches apart. I wish I had not um, done the end there, but I had to do it anyways to just kind of make sure that it's nice and even and tight in all the right spaces. So you'll see me take those staples back out in another part further down in this video. So as I'm stapling, I am pulling the fabric to make sure it's nice and tight. And if you look up in the top right, right there, you can see it has a really nice seamless look. All right. So if you didn't want to like cover the inside part of the bench cushion, um, you know, you wouldn't have to. So this is how it looks. And then now I have to finish up the sides. So I'm going to go ahead and cut off all the excess parts that I do not need because this is a thick um, fabric that I'm using for this bench is a upholstery fabric I hope I'm saying that right but I'm just gonna fold it over almost like you're folding a present but not too too neat I put a little twist in the seam right there before I folded it over and um, stapled it down you want to make sure you're holding the fabric really tight so that it has that nice smooth look on the other side of the bench, okay? So I was going to just fold this in underneath that um, end right there, fold it in and just staple it down, but I'm going to have to take out the staple and, you know, kind of redo that staple, which isn't, which isn't a problem, you know? So as you can see, I just pulled it in there and it smoothed it out really nicely. And I'm just going to staple that down. I 
I've had some people complain that my head or my hair is in the shot and I can't help that. I am doing a DIY. This is not a, you know, five minute DIY. This is a process and I have to move around. So I do hope you understand that. Okay. Some of the excess fabric was giving me a difficult time trying to pull it over. So I just went ahead and cut that part off. And then now it's just easier to kind of pull that fabric in under there and just finish it off and staple it down in place. Watch your fingers, please. Okay. Ran out of staples reloaded and finish that area off as you guys could see so now I'm doing the other end that's how it looks and this is the back end part not the front end part this is the back end part where the hinges were attached so I'm cutting off excess fabric and then now I'm just gonna go ahead and finish along the front part of the bench I mean the back part, not the front, the front, not the, the back. It's kind of confusing, you know, is because I saw the staples. The front part has the seamless edge right there and then the back doesn't have it. So I decided to go ahead and cover the inside of the seating part of the bench. And I'm using the same fabric that I used to make cushion covers for cushions that I added to the bench. I was gonna film that, but I ran out of memory cards and memory space, I just couldn't do it. But um, once this video is finished um, editing, once I finish editing this and uploading this, I'll definitely have hours worth of um, memory um, available to do that again. So if you guys wanna see how I make pillow cushions for the bench and stuff like that, please let me know in the comments section. So as you guys could see, I folded it over and stapled it down really close to the edge, you know, so it's barely noticeable. And you can't really notice the staples on this fabric because of the design that it has. So it kind of blends in a bit. And I don't see anyone opening up my bench and checking for staples under the bench, you know. That would be weird. So I'm just stapling this in place instead of doing the... Um, the melting glue strip that I used for the other couch that I did on this channel, which I'm going to have to redo that couch because I think I said this already on the channel that suede does not work with pets. And when I bought that fabric, you know, my pets were still very small and not drooling all over the place and doing big pet stuff. You know what I mean? All right, you guys, so now that I'm done with the bench seating part, now I'm going to go with the back part of the bench. So this is the part that was in that, you know, that area that's empty. It's a big, long, empty area. It's broken, it's cracked, and it has a lot of water damage. So I went ahead and got this board from Lowe's, and you can use this to do tufted um, headboards and things like that. But I got this to do the back part of the bench because it was super cheap. And that's probably one of the main reasons a lot of people uses it because it's super cheap. So I marked out my size of the back part and I used a hand saw to cut it off. I got some help from my hubby for once in his life. <laughs> he's probably going to be like, for once in your life. He, he's, you know, he works a lot, but he decided to help hold it in place for me while I cut this part out. So these are the pieces and that's the new piece and I'm going to show you how I cover it. So I was going to go ahead and use um, cushion to do the bench back, but I decided to go ahead and just do two layers of batting. You could do two or three layers, depending on how, you know, flush or puffy you want it to look. I didn't want it to be too, too puffy. So I just did two layers of the batting. You can do two to three layers, or you can just do a layer of the uh, mattress pad, turn it over to the smooth side, and then just attach it to the back part. But one of the main reasons as well is that when I used the staple gun on this board, it went right through and kind of pierced it. 
so there's not enough space for the staples to go through and have like a smooth edge on the other side. They were like, there was like staples poking out and it was like a hazard. So I just went ahead with the batting since I wanted a flatter back anyways. So I cut the batting out to size and then I just used fabric glue to glue it down onto the board. Here I'm cutting the second piece. And I'm sorry if the lighting keeps changing. Um, I hope you guys understand that this video was filmed on multiple different days, different times during the day. So I'm working with natural light, sunlight, daylight, whatever you want to call it, and darkness and that, and you know, and my filming lights. So the light goes in and out. This is not like a controlled studio setting where I'm doing DIY. So I've had recently a few people complain about my hair and my arm. And, but I feel like you can pretty much see what I'm doing. You know, my arm has to be in the way to do some of these projects. It's, I'm not invisible. So you will see me in the videos. So I hope you understand that. So as you guys can see, I'm putting down a bead of glue onto the board and then attaching my batting. Um, don't worry about the um, um, hutch that's underneath this. Um, I'm actually going to be redoing that. Um, so yeah, but there was no glue on it. You can also use your hot glue gun to attach this to the board if you want to. I could have definitely done that, but I did not have patience to wait for the hot glue to get hot and do all of that. So I just went in with the fabric glue. Now I'm going to also go in with some spray glue, and this is for the second layer of the batting. This was just like super easy. I just sprayed and attached the second layer. So there's multiple things that you can use to, you know, attach fabric to wood or to itself or to another piece of fabric. Just wanted to show the variety in that, you guys. And I'm trying my best to not use any music in my DIY videos. I've had a lot of compliments on um, not using it in other videos. So I'm trying to not use it maybe just in the intro and outro. But um, I see that you guys enjoy the videos without having music in it. So you can probably pay better attention to what it is that I'm doing. And it will always be a good thing if you're watching DIY videos or cooking videos to have a little notepad. And if you know, if you're serious about doing the DIY to write down things that you may need or things that, you know, like equipment or tool or supplies that you may need or tricks or parts in the videos where you can like write down, okay, this part of the video, I did this and this and this. Okay. So as you guys can see, I laid down the fabric on its front part so it's on the back right now and I'm putting the board and just kind of measuring up how much fabric I'm gonna need so I went ahead and used the fabric I always do a little bit more than I need for my projects so I stapled on the fabric into the area where that board used to be so this is what I'm gonna do instead of um, wrapping the fabric around the board I'm just gonna staple it in place and then put the board behind it and then staple that in place okay and there's Jack as always inspecting my work and as you guys could see I went along the top part of the area where the back part was inserted at one point in time the old part and here I'm lining up the back the new back part and here you're gonna see how it's looking so that's how it's gonna look okay so once I have it nice and lined up and it fits perfectly in that space I'm gonna use my staple gun to attach it to that space and I'm doing my staples in a sideway um, 
direction or position so one staple goes into the board and one staple goes into the bench itself make sure you check if you get the same type of bench make sure you check the front to see that the staples aren't coming through in the front through the fabric so here you could see it one staple going into the board and one staple going into the bench itself I'm doing the same thing for the bottom as well And I'm also pulling the fabric while doing this so I get a nice smooth surface in the front. I did use a lot of staples for this project. I had to like re-up a couple of times, but you know, staples come in handy and they make things so much easier you know, for you, especially when you're doing projects like these. So now that I have the extra fabric cut off, I'm going to go in and use that extra fabric that I had left over and cover the back. I was going to actually glue it down to the back part of the board but I was like you know what let me just cover the entire back so just in case I would ever have to open this up and go into the back to fix something you know say a staple popped out or the back popped out which I'm pretty sure that's not gonna happen unless someone punches it really really hard but I wanted to do it like this so easy access for me without having to deal with glue I can always open up the staples and then go in there I'm also stapling this down on the inside part of the back of the bench so as you guys can see like the staples are going upward so this is to give me the seamless look as well so you don't see any staples there So I'm putting the staples about four inches apart just to make it nice and smooth. And here I'm going to staple it down. Um, I was going to try to figure out to do a way, do it the way that it was um, invisible or seamless, but I was running out of patience and I just wanted to finish this. I think it's still pretty neat and cool looking um, that I did it like this in the back because most furniture in the back is not the cutest. So you know, who's going to, hey, look, I'm just saying, who's going to turn my bench around and be like, I see staples. If you see staples, oh, well, if you got a problem, then I don't care. Get out. <laughs> I know. Is that mean? Eh, it could be mean. You know, there are staples on the bottom of bar stools. Nobody complains about those, you know. It's just like sometimes people like to nitpick at every little thing because they find nothing wrong, so they have to make things up. So now I'm going to use a box cutter and cut off the excess fabric that I do not need. And please, if you're using a box cutter, please be careful with your fingers. Okay, we cannot buy fingers at the moment. This gives me a really nice, clean cut across. And there it is. So now I can turn it around and we're almost there. It looks good already, but I wanted to attach my bench seating cushion to the actual bench. So I went in with new hinges and I put one on each end. And these were 276 for two of them. And it came with the screws and everything. And I got this from the Home Depot, I believe. Yes, the Home Depot. Because I go to Lowe's and Home Depot, and sometimes Home Depot has more than Lowe's, you know, and cheaper prices. So I'm going to attach the bench. My husband helped with this part. He helped um, hold it open. I just saw his foot there. <laughs> you know, a lot of people have been requesting him in videos on my other channel. So here he is. You got a foot and a hand, and maybe a little bit of a leg there. Now for the buttons on my bench. I'm using a button cover kit. I'll put the link down below. And some of you might find this really handy for, you know, clothes that you have that's missing buttons. So you can cover new buttons and reattach them. They come with the back where you could sew it on and they come with the back where you don't have to sew it on. So you have the flat back and then the back with um, the, the little loop to sew it on to. 
So as you guys can see, I put the piece of fabric in the uh, mold and then I put the button in and then I cut off the extra parts of fabric that I do not need and then I pull over the fabric just a bit because you're going to put in the finish, finishing parts, like a little cap that you press down in there. And this holds the fabric in place and gives it that seamless look. So this one has the um, little attachment to sew it onto something, but I won't be sewing these buttons on. And then you get this blue part where you push it down and then it pops into place and that's your covered button. Cool, right? And this is the same fabric that I use to cover the inside of the bench and what I use to make my new cushions. To get, to get that like tufted look, like, you know, it almost looks like a little butthole, not a butthole, but you know what I mean? Like it's like an indent. I used my staple and made a little cross in the middle of the bench and I didn't measure before doing this. So don't just do this freehand measure. Okay. I found the center of the bench by measuring and you know, dividing and all that good stuff and found the center of the bench and it went across the width, the length and all that. So here I'm doing the same thing. The center of the button to the end of the bench well, the end of the back piece of the bench. Okay. And then finding the center and then going across and then finding the center as well. And then making my little, you know, cross thing with my staple gun. So I made a little mark with my nail once I found the center or you can use a plier. It's just like a little tiny hole or a tiny mark. Okay. If you're nervous, just use a pencil or a, a chalk or something. So I'm going to add in my little cross or a little X with my staple gun. So you see, we get that little indent and it makes it look like the button is sewn in to, you know, the back. You see what I mean? You see what I mean? And here I am using hot glue. It's a bit more secure than the um, fabric glue, especially since the fabric, this fabric that I'm using is, you know, a faux leather type of fabric and it's slippery. So that glue was slipping all over the place. So I went in with the hot glue and it works great. You guys, it's super sturdy and it's not going anywhere. So just hold it in place for about 30 seconds and you should be good to go. And it, it does get hot by the way. So if you want, you can wear some gloves. It does get hot. Okay. So I have my two buttons up and Jack is back again, inspecting, making sure I do everything right. You know, cause he's the one that pays me. A, I, I don't know. He's just always there. But I, I think because I got him at such a young age and he pretty much grew up watching me do things is, I don't know, is maybe his time to think that it's bonding time, which I don't mind at all. All right, so I put in my third button and this is the final product. I hope you guys enjoyed this long DIY video. I asked on my Instagram if you guys wanted this in two parts or one part. So you suggested one video, one long video. So I hope you liked it. If you did, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Comment down below. Let me know what you think. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. I love you guys and I'll see you all very soon in another DIY video. Bye.